everyone, welcome back to the Hidden in the Thrones podcast, the show where I read the Game of Thrones books for the first time and give you my genuine reaction to the tales events. My name is Kershaw Mike, creator and host for this podcast and first time Game of Thrones reader. Hope you're having a good week this week, or had actually, depending on when this comes out. Either way, here's hoping that things are moving in the way that you would like it to go, and if it's not, hey, tomorrow's another day and things will definitely well i'm saying definitely like i have a crystal ball but hopefully here's to hoping things get better tomorrow um so um i caved i caved you guys i was planning this episode and um i was bombarded by my ipads were bombarded by yet another tweet about bridgerton i'm not sure what caused this really um it's not that i don't have anything else to talk about because i still have to congratulate the right reverend raphael warnock pronounced stacy abrams on a fantastic win and i plan to do this in this particular opening part where we just kind of talk before we get into the show i really did i really did want to start off on that congratulatory note and given you know other events um of well I'm recording this um, a day early before the release. So, um, yesterday would have been Wednesday. And Wednesday the 6th was a pretty busy day in the United States. Probably in the next podcast, I'll be able to talk about that a little bit more. Because um, it went from celebratory to really, really depressing in a matter of minutes. Um, but my brain saw the tweet. And I was just like, you know what? Let's just get this over with you. And so I'm planning the episode. And I was going back and forth between planning and hearing Thank You Next on violin. And I was just bopping, you know? Um, it, I, I, I mean, my personal opinion is that I it, it felt out of place for me. But it was still really cool to see them, you know, kind of dancing around. Given that it's a period drama and then hearing thank you next it, it felt kind of out of place but it was also kind of cool so you know um other than that the barbs are ridiculous the second hand hand embarrassment moments are delicious i live for second hand embarrassment if a show has second hand embarrassment it's already great if you can make me put down a book a show for days on end you have a really good show already and and i cannot stress this last one enough there is a black duke on my screen. Je répète. There is a black duke on my screen. This is not a drill, people. Shondaline, Shondaland strikes again, and she ain't never missed a target yet. And he is fine as hell. He's not just there as some sort of specimen or something well he is a specimen but he's not just there as a spectacle or or something he's fine as hell oh yeah oh yeah baby thank you shonda oh my goodness i I, but i i don't know i didn't know if i had the emotional strength to finish the series uh, but I did, and I'll talk about that in the next podcast as well. Um, but I was in my mind when I was watching it, I was thinking of the tiny moments thus far, it was going to be quite the shindig. I that was like my initial thought, and I wasn't wrong, it was quite the shindig. Uh, I saw a couple of people disagreeing that they didn't really like the show. That, um, I don't know if this was supposed to be irony or what, but um, or maybe they just really didn't like the show. They didn't like the show. They didn't think the lead was um, that handsome. To that, I say. And um, I, you know, it it it. To me, it was a good show because I like Regency. I like Regency period books, and I like that kind of stuff. So, um, it was a great show for me, at least. I had a good time. And I, I, in my mind, I'm, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to get out of it. <clears throat> I'm trying to get out of it. No, um, but I'm kind of still. My mind is still kind of in between, um, period 
time and well that particular time and between now so um i started speaking in the accent and everything and i didn't need to um but i i i ended up doing all of that and i had to listen to some soca music and some dancehall to kind of reset my mind because like i have to remind myself hey Trinidadian, you're not from there but, and the realities of it is so much more different so come back come back Trinidadian can't be capturing your mindset right now and i just you know I, I, it was a great show it was a fantastic show just to um to round it up it was a it was a fantastic show anyway congratulations uh in order for Reverend Warnock on his win in the Georgia Senate runoff. Congratulations. Clappers to you. Yes. I didn't doubt that he would win though. I never I don't know how many people did, but I never doubted that he would win. He um he it didn't help that his opponent was just uh trying to find a respectful word, but um I don't think that I can. But she was really awful from like the start. She just went um after his she went after his 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 character i she did get racist at a, at a few points in time but what's new this that has been the entire republican campaign from day one so I, i'm not surprised that she lost to be honest she fought a really well i'm kind of surprised i'm not surprised as well i i definitely knew that reverend warnock was going to win he um as much as possible tried to stay on top of issues and his his opponent did not help matters with the way that she fought her campaign that's that's basically what i want to say she did not help matters by the way she fought her campaign she was not she was not speaking about issues but she made it seem as if she was speaking about issues but she was really targeting reverend the reverend warnock and i mean he ended up winning and i'm happy for him the only other race that i was worried about was the us of purdy race i really was worried about that for a hot for, for the whole season actually because um purdue was just purdue was purdue was I, if I'm, I'm i'm i'll check it after because i could be mistaken because i wasn't paying attention as closely as i should have been but purdue was was pretty much tagged to be it I can't remember if Ossoff won in the November elections or not. But um, but given Georgia, I knew that there were a lot of Republicans who would have gone out and voted. So that's like the only one that I was really kind of concerned for. But um, yeah, I was, I'm, I'm glad for Forever Warnock and um, Stacey Abrams and her team. Oh, and for those of you wondering, yes, we do have CNN in the Caribbean along with a lot of other things so we know what's going on we don't we don't just play on the beach all the time guys okay we, we know what the hell is going on in the world and we pay attention and we, we, we know things right we know things um listen and and most of all i empathize with the exhaustion the exhaustion that elections must bring i really do so for Stacey abrams and the state of georgia to rally and pull this off when i know that everybody must just be absolutely the entire of the united states must be so absolutely exhausted at this point of all the nonsense that the the, the republicans keep putting out it's commendable um tnt had elections in september of, of 2020 that's last september and the run-up to elections was just as exhausting it was the experience from hell i don't think we've ever had an election that has been this bad in and and it still hasn't gotten as bad as it did yesterday wednesday um but i don't think we've had an election that was this bad let's just say that unfortunately politics is politics around the world and that certain parties that fall into certain positions or find themselves in certain positions after elections tend to take the piss when they don't have their way and stress everyone in the entire nation out at once because they can't have their way 
it's the same thing all around the world so i know what you guys are feeling i know what you guys are going through it's not as our situation was not as bad as but we understand the stress that you guys go through all the time i know i'm not saying taking the piss because of bridgerton <laughs> i've listen taking the piss is probably one of my favorite um english phrases of all time taking the piss i know i probably didn't use it right either but taking the piss is probably like uh, it's great i love it i love it but yeah so i understand the exhaustion and and for stacy abrams and team and reverend warnock and nate to really just and the state of georgia to really just rally and pull this off i i congratulate you guys even in exhaustion even in exhaustion uh, i know we have other things to talk about concerning wednesday's event um and and maybe we can talk about this in next podcast because it's it's only Thursday and I know by the time you'll get this the, the other one it'll probably be Monday or so um, God willing and um, I really just want to give you all time to digest what the hell really happened on Capitol Hill but for now congratulations Reverend Warnock congratulations I, I can say now uh, congratulations to uh, Senator Ossoff on your wins and I'm rooting for both of you. I hope you'll go in there. You'll make a difference. You'll really give the Republicans a run for their money. And I I hope you'll really. I hope you'll. I hope. I hope you'll win. I hope. I hope you'll win at the end of the day. I'm rooting for you. You all are the ones that I'm rooting for all the way over here in the Caribbean. Yeah, girl. I said it. All my Republican supporters, y'all can y'all can log off if you want, but I said it. Yep. It's a Caribbean woman in America's business child. How does it feel? So in this next chapter, the Stark household is in transition and mourning at the same time. And it brings a very heavy blanket over the day's activities. Everyone is occupied with thoughts of Bran and with thoughts of going south. And it's just it's, it's just a lot going on right now. So with everything happening, Jon Snow decides to take it upon himself to see his little brother out of fear that it might be the last time that he might see him. As one would when confronted with a situation where a close family member is you know seems to be approaching death's door unfortunately for him Bran's mother is in the room and we all know how much of a fan Caitlin is of John and to make a long story short Caitlin was less than nice to John as we knew she would be it's not a surprise I know this is kind of like a it's a touchy subject and I certainly have no idea what it's like to be faced with the reminder and a constant reminder that of well um of cheating, of infidelity, of going outside of the marriage. So I, I don't know what that experience is like, so I don't know the feelings associated with that kind of emotion and the kind of turmoil that, that brings. But I still have a problem with how she treats John versus how she treats her husband or treat well how she treats Ned. Given that Ned is the one that went outside of the marriage. John never asked to be here. The indiscretion was committed by Edward when he went off to war and couldn't keep his tilly wing to himself. That's how John came to be. He didn't ask to be here. Forget the fact that Caitlin said that she was okay with it, or at least that's what she claimed that she was okay with it, and then she and she said because earlier she said that she understood that men had needs and whatever. No, frick that. If you know you're not comfortable, well then how are you how possibly are you going to stop a man from doing that anyway? Like I mean I mean you could threaten him, but like no no anyway, keep on track, keep on track, because <laughs> this episode is already long. Um. At the time, because at, I'm, at the time, Caitlin was pregnant for Ned with Rob, I believe, because they had the same age. And she didn't really love him, 
and she went by Ruth because that's what Lady of the Houses do. So she was kind of like saying whatever Lady of the Houses say. You know, it's okay. You know, they need to keep. You know, they need to um, they have needs and they need to be tended. They need to be tended to, and yeah, 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 yeah. But she's still not to blame in this instance. I'm not blaming her. I'm not blaming her. Ned is the one that's to blame. John is the victim here, out of all of this. And while I understand that she's hurt, not just by John's presence, but by everything that has happened with Bran and with her children leaving, I can't I can't condone how she treats him. I really can't. I'm so sorry about it. I can't I can't condone that. It's really harsh and it's unnecessary and I wish she would just I don't know. I don't know. I mean it could be solved by sending John away, but Ned doesn't want to send John away. So then you have a kinda like a predicament there. And I feel I feel at this point the, the issue should be taken up with Ned, but because she has to remember that John would feel just as Kate then he has feelings, John also has feelings. They're both human beings. And the person that she, she needs to be mad at is Ned. And he Ned should have been dealt with accordingly a long time ago. This situation should have been dealt with accordingly. She should have given him a real ultimatum. She didn't want to. She didn't want to. Again, I'm not blaming Caitlin at all. I'm not blaming her. I know it's a tough situation. Again, I don't know what 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 this is like. So I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not judging her. I'm not bashing her in any way i'm at least I'm, I'm not trying to bash her in any way this is not her fault in any way all of this happened because of ned but i'm saying that given the situation a boat was missed to kind of totally confront the situation and come to a, a proper conclusion and come to an arrangement that would fit everybody but that boat was missed and now she's living with it and she's continuing to live with it every day. The harshest line in the chapter and the lowest, dirtiest point for me is when she told John it should have been you. And that to me was quite disrespectful. Uh, I know she's in grief, but it was disrespectful and it was wrong. And what sucks even more is that she meant it. And that's very, very sad. In terms of literary things, um, I didn't notice anything. I was just kind of sad about how she treated John. Um, John eventually does go off to the wall in the end after saying goodbye to Rob and so on. But I didn't really... You know, it was nice to see that he and Rob had a good relationship. And that Rob didn't have a problem with him. It's just the mom. And to some extent, Sansa, but... Y'all know how I kind of feel about Sansa already. Well, if you don't, well, we'll find out. We'll find out how I... Okay. I don't, I don't think... I think this chapter... Was, I think this is... I, I'm too far ahead. That's why I thought I talked about San, Sansa already. I haven't talked about Sansa yet, but you'll find out how I feel about Sansa. But yeah, um, I don't like how Caitlyn treats Ned. I don't like how Ned um, is a lot... Well... I don't think he I don't think he notices, but um I don't like how Caitlin treats Ned. And I I don't like how the situation hasn't been confronted if it's such a big issue. Hey there. All the big podcasts usually take this opportunity to talk about their sponsors. This podcast doesn't have any. But there's nothing like speaking it into existence before it happens. So, this is an ad space and this is made for the Hidden in the Thrones podcast. Now on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Casts, Breaker, Radio Public, and Anchor. The following chapter details the wedding between Carl Drogo and Daenerys Stormborn. And I am just completely in shock that they really let this 14-year-old marry this over 20 year old and everyone is acting like everything is just gucci like it's a normal day in the park well i guess it is for them anyway 
so there are several things about the ceremony that bothered me and i know people are gonna say i'm nitpicking but i really care it's my show <laughs> um first of all the whole throwing the coin thing so there's a point where the women dance in the wedding the women of the dothraki tribe dance in the wedding and then the cow makes it drip on the dancers not rain he makes it drip he throws like one coin down and then they all scrabble over it so like they could get the coin like that is just the the pinnacle of noop for me at this point but i do understand that they were trying to secure the bag and i do understand that it was a different time at least in that particular time but it's a it's a it's a no from me dog it's a it's a no for me on on the bright side on, on the on the less dark side <laughs> for all of two seconds danny had a strip club in her wedding or a dancer's club is it a dancer's club or a strip club can we call it a strip club it could be a strip club because it was money this wasn't a lot of stripping there's just it's money but there was there was another stripping anyway she had a strip club in her wedding for two seconds and that's i don't know that's kind of that's kind of interesting there yeah, that's interesting she also was kind of like a voyeur for all of two seconds of her life. Against her will, but she was still a voyeur. Apparently, the men of the Dostraki Chai felt the need to grab the dancers. At least this is their culture. They felt that they needed to grab the dancers and have sex with them in the middle of the ring. With nobody batting an eye like, yep. Yeah, this is a Thursday morning. <laughs> uh, not only that, they were here killing each other for the same year. So, like, what would happen was that um, they would, the girl would start dancing, and, well, at least in, in the scene that they described, the girl started dancing, and then one guy came out and started to grab her and, you know, do, do, his, do, his, do his business. And this other guy, I don't know where he, he came from, but he, like, grabbed a girl and tried to do his business, and then they started sword fighting and the f- the initial guy killed the other guy and um then the initial guy went for the other for, for another girl altogether and you know started doing his business in the military ring. It was very, very um jarring. I I think Martin intended to jar us there a little bit because like what? Okay. But, uh, uh. And all this was before Danny hit 18, right? Be aware that this girl is 13 years old. Just, just, just remember, she's 13 years old. It was, it was a rough situation back in the day, boy. Wow. It is really used to happen. It is based on, I can't, I, I should have done my research to find out if this was based on like real situations or, or history or stuff or anything like that. But if it is, back in the day was really really rough thank god for child laws thank god for child laws and all at least the juror made me feel kind of better with this gift he really didn't but you know he gave her books right he, he gave her books as a wedding present and all i'm saying is if somebody came and gave me books as a wedding present they would be my forever friend because i love books no matter what so the times of types of books. So I mean, you know, if if you all ever hear me come on here and announce that I'm getting married, you guys know, you know, I'll probably give you all some genres to send, but um Yeah, y'all would be my favorite friends if 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 I told y'all I was getting married and then you guys sent me books. That would be that would y'all would be my friends forever. And ever and ever. Not that y'all aren't my friends now, but I mean I just know that I can trust you with my life. <laughs> um anyway he brings her books someone else brings her the dragon eggs which are cool of course and i know it's a major plot point but i was more enthralled by the fact that somebody took the time to bring her books sorry i know that i know the eggs are plot point that like they're the most part important part of her story but like you know books though two lines in the entire chapter bothered me uh, somebody had said they do not understand sin or shame as we do and i don't know about y'all but it sounds very 
very colonial to me. Um, it sounds it sounds very slavery ish. It sounds slaver ish. It sounds colonial ish. It sounds uh, invader ish. There's a word that I'm looking for and it's not coming to me. And I'm seeing all these words and it's not coming to me. But yeah, uh, does that sound great? Degrading many, many Spanish, the English, all of them basically said some kind of variation of what this person said, you know, and and justify that as a reason to to colonize and to kill the Amerindians, um, the tribes here in the Caribbean who were here before the Africans and, and stuff in the Caribbean, who were the people inhabiting here, the inhabitants of most of the islands in Trinidad and Tobago, and up the chain, sorry, most of the islands. It's the same thing basically that Columbus said, and all the English and the Portuguese, all the slavers that came here and that just ravished the lands, said some variation of that. And so, you know, I guess fiction and real life, well, fiction is kind of based on real life. Even though it have they, this is this is a fantasy book and it's doing that, so that that line totally bothered me, for for a really long time. And the other line, um, well, this is a portion of a line that somebody said, as if she were a child, like my boy, she is a child, she's thirteen, she's a child. Like what do you mean, like as if she were a child? She is a child. You're all just greedy and selfish. And power hungry and disgusting, and you all just don't care about her development, and that's why you all think she's adult enough. She's a child. She's a child, and nothing's changing that. She's a child. Last thing, the love scene. Not going to condone it. You can make it as seem as unbarbaric. Is that a word? You can try to make it seem less barbaric, and as gentle as you want can't condone this girl's 13 this man is 20 something and she obviously would have been hurt even though at the very last i mean but it was kind of like it was consent under the under kind of like duress because i mean what she, what she was gonna do run away you know just kill her or something she didn't really have a choice she thought she did didn't have a choice felt good after a while she did feel good after a while but she didn't really have a choice and um it's a new from me and that is where i'm going to end the episode thanks for joining me today i appreciate your esteemed company leave me a voice message if you have the anchor app leave me a tweet if you don't at to be done book w1 or at miss mike 772 that's msmike 772 i'd love to hear your thoughts please no spoilers but i'd love to hear from you guys on these two chapters that we talked about today and uh other thoughts that you will have about game of thrones before these chapters be sure to subscribe we are now officially on six different podcast stations google Podcasts, spotify breaker pocket cast real public and of course here on anchor we're on youtube as well to be on book home podcasts it's the home of hidden in thrones podcast as well as future the future home hopefully of many other podcasts to come so thank you for listening today um i appreciate you and your company today and always stay safe Stay focused. Folks, I'm gone.